Hey guys, we are going to go over some common mistakes that people like to make from these last, really the last two sections, but it's a combination of the last four. Um, so the big thing that I see a lot of is when we get problems that look like this. So uh, a lot of us do remember that we need to look at this last number and make sure that they multiply to give us negative 35. So if that's the case, we need to make sure that we have one positive and one negative factor. So factors of 35, well, we have 1 times 35. Okay, but 1 needs to be negative, so let's make the 35 negative. This 1 will make the 1 negative. And we also have 7 times 5. So we could do 7 times negative 5 or negative 7 times 5. All right, so now we need to pick the factors that add up to this number in the middle. So what I see a lot of people doing is picking this one right here and saying, oh, the answer is n plus 7 times n minus 5. But how do I know that this is wrong? Well, if I multiply it out, And then when I go to combine my like terms here, I have 7n minus 5n. Well, what is that? That's 2n. So I have plus 2n minus 35. What's different about this versus the original polynomial? It's the middle term. This one is a minus 2n, but ours, if we multiply it out, we get a positive 2n. So that's how we know that this answer is not right. So where was their mistake? Their mistake is when they picked which factors were correct. So what we should do here is we should actually take the time and figure out what they add up to. Well, if I add 1 plus negative 35, that gives me negative 34. If I add negative 1 and 35, that gives me positive 34. If I add 7 and negative 5, that's like 7 minus 5, that gives me positive 2. But if I add negative 7 and 5, that one gives me negative 2. I know I'm looking for a negative because this is minus 2n in the middle. So we need to pick the terms that give us a negative 2. So we actually didn't want 7 and negative 5. We wanted negative 7 and positive 5. So it's going to be n minus 7 and n plus 5. So be very careful with uh, your signs. Make sure that you're picking the right one to be negative and the right one to be positive. The other big mistake that I see a lot is when we see quadratics that look like this, we immediately jump into, okay, I need to go to the last term. I'm looking for factors of negative 200, and we just start listing them. Okay, so I could do negative uh, 20 times 10. I could do, and people just start listing and listing and listing. But look for a shortcut first. Look for something to make your life a little bit easier. Uh, is there something that we could do before we start? Yeah, because you need to look for if you have any common factors. I could divide every single one of these by 4, and a big indication is that, is that there's this 4 out front. So, yes, I can divide this by 4, I can divide this by 4, I can divide this by 4. So I'm going to pull a 4 out front and then put the rest of it in parentheses. So now ask, well, what's each of these divided by 4? Well, this is just going to be 1x squared or x squared. Okay, what's negative 20x divided by 4? That's going to be negative 5x. What's negative 200 divided by 4? That's going to be minus 50. So now we have a much smaller number here. We have negative 50 that we need to list factors of, and we're looking for numbers that add up to negative 5x. That's a lot better. So I know it's not going to be 1 times 50. I'm not even going to bother writing that. Um, 2 times 25, no. I think it's going to have to be 5 times 10. So it's either going to be 5 times negative 10, or it's going to be negative 5 times positive 10. All right, here it is again. Which ones add up to negative 5x? Well, these ones add up to negative 5. These ones add up to positive 5. So I want these ones right here. All right, so my 4 stayed out front, and then my factors are going to be 5 and negative 10. So it's going to be x plus 5 and x minus 10. 
here is my factored form.